Hi everyone, welcome back to the road to 2200. We are currently 2009. Um, we've been playing some pretty bad chess. I'm coming off of like a four game losing streak. Well, I won one and then lost four or five and then I won my most recent one, but I was completely losing. My opponent just blundered main one because of a little trick I did. So yeah, I'm not doing fantastic on the rating, um, but that's okay. Let's get into a 10 minute game and see what we can do. We get black as always, as always. As always, yeah, I don't love this person's rating, so I'm going to abort this one, or their win rate. Sketch. So now we play a 21 on right? That's always fun. Uh, okay. You know what's funny is I was playing a bunch of D4 players earlier today, and I was, I was going in on D4 players really hard. <laughs> like, oh man, it's, it, it was not pretty. Yeah, they... they Every person I play, I think my most recent game, I played against somebody who just knew mainline Grunfeld theory. Wait a minute. I don't think that's right. I think you first have to do this or something. Or maybe I'm wrong. I come here, here. Wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Why do I think that's a blunder? Here they just take like this. They could do this. This could be the next move. Yeah. Check. They come back. I come here. I know that's like potentially a move. I need to not spend so much time on my opening. I constantly lose on time. Well, actually, that's not true recently. Here, here. Here, they probably just come back here and reroute. Let's just castle. I think we just had an exact game like this in the last video where I lost on time because of like, you know, 0.14 seconds on the clock for my opponent or something like that. Yeah, they do the smart move, they do a good move. <sighs> Yeah. Here, if they do this, then I always have this square, which I'm... Ooh, ooh, do I actually? Do I? Because I put this bishop here. If they do this, knight a5, like I showed in the last game, is always an idea. Yeah, but they don't want to allow that. Well, actually, it's, it still allows it, but... Um... Here, here, bishop here to hit the knight. Oh, don't mouse slip, don't mouse slip now, buddy. Yeah, I feel like I'm misplaying this already somehow. Here, can he take, take? Yeah, this does nothing because he just come. He he just comes here. My opportunity to play that move is gone. Then I guess I could come here maybe. Here, here, do this to hit both his. So here, his knight jumps in this way. I come here, which now the line of the rook is severed. I'm hitting his queen and here. Don't really see a way for him to defend both. So I think he has to take, and I take. And I've I've mounted some nice pressure, I think. Yeah, and once here, here, he obviously doesn't have time to take my bishop because I take his queen. So another game in the Grunfeld, which I might lose. I might lose this one because I'm playing somebody who's 2100. They're very good. Their peak is what? 2500 probably? 2178. So they're they're very good. They're coming off some not so great results. So maybe we can catch them in a slight tilt or something. I don't know. Here, here. 
And then here, 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 takes, here. Oh, it seems so wishy-washy. This is the problem with the Grunfeld. It gets so theoretical and crazy. Here, takes, takes, takes. I come here. Hmm. Better yet here. So Knight c4, bishop takes c4, bishop takes c4, rook takes b7. Bishop takes here, here, here. I'm going for that. I don't think it's smart, but I'm going to go for it. Oh, he can no, he can't do that. And if he takes, then I do this, and it's an end game where we both have a pawn, and it's probably drawing. It's it's actually just a complete draw. It's actually just fully symmetrical. This has to be losing here, here, here. His only move is this. At which point I come here, threatening different scary stuff. is forced here if he takes here then here 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 he has to be losing in that position he has to be you could also take like this which that would be crazy i think that would actually be crazy it's here here should i risk should i risk a losing end game against somebody who's I'm in bad form as well. Like I've lost so many of my games recently. So many of my games. He could also take this pawn. But if here he takes this pawn, then I think he loses because here, here, this would win the... My intuition tells me to do this. My intuition tells me to do that. If he takes here either way, I think he has, he has to be losing, right? He has to be losing. And if he takes here, that's just a blunder of a rook. If here, then I have this trick. I mean, worst comes to worst, I do this and I just pick up this pawn, which is again, still drawing, but um, he's gonna do this now. I think he has to do that, right? If not, then I'm starting to shove my pawn down the board. And uh, well, here, that actually gets kind of scary for me because he could come here. Here. 
here. I don't know if he can do this. Here, 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 takes, takes. It's dicey for me. It's really dicey. Here he does this. Everything in me just says, take this pawn and uh, be happy you're not getting mated or something. I really want to push h5, though. Like, h5 seems so strong for me. I can't take, like, this threatening this because the rook defends that. And if here, 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 I just feel like I have way too little time. I'm pushing h5. I'm pushing h5. I'm going for the jugular. Oh! Oh no! I just walked into mate. Oh, if he gives this check, I have to do this. Well, no, I don't. Okay, sorry. Here, here, check. Here. Because if I come here, then he... Yeah, he wants to checkmate me. He wants to checkmate me. That's understandable. It's pretty rude, but I get it. I get it. But I think I'm quicker to the punch. Yeah, what he wants is like, you know, if I were to do something random, like, you know, I don't know. There's not really many random moves in this position. Here he takes, then here if he takes, then here, and I feel like that's just walking into a checkmate somehow. I don't see the checkmate. Here takes, here takes, and here probably. Uh, yeah, smart, smart guy, smart guy. Yeah, I can't do this because check here and mate. Yeah, I fucked this. Here he can just trade, and that's a super winning endgame for him. Yeah, I mean, I tried. I tried making it interesting. I tried my best. Here... Back here, 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 here. Yeah, he's just winning. Yeah, yeah, he'll he'll be winning there. Oh, uh, I have to do something like this and just not allow checks. Sucks. Well, we'll check with the analysis if I had anything there. If I should have just gone for the draw, I don't know. Yeah, he wants to. Yeah, he wants to trade. Obviously, um, that's 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 pretty obvious there. Let's threaten mate. We'll see it. Probably just yeah. Wait a minute. No, this just walks into mate here, 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 right? If he comes here, then here, and he, I think he's getting mated. I think he's getting mated. I think he messed up. Here, then this check. Oh, but then here. Oh, but then here. Yeah, I think my opponent's walking into checkmate here.
Now, if they come here, then check here for mate. Yeah. And if here, same thing, here, here, their only moves are here, here, and then I checkmate them. Wow. I mean, at least I think that's the variation. I think that's all the moves. Yeah, they just resign because they see it. Wow. My, my opponent gave me a complete lifeline which H, with H3. H3. I think otherwise I'm just completely losing. Okay, that's kind of weird. It said I played with better accuracy. It said I played with 85 and they played with 80. I disagree. I think my opponent was playing very well. Okay, I don't think I gave you guys any kind of like a crash course, quote unquote, on um, um, the Grunfeld, but um, let's just run through it quickly for those who aren't aware. So against d4, I always play knight f6. Sometimes I play, it depends what they play. Sometimes I play Grunfeld, sometimes I play King's Indian. So whoa, we're at 16 minutes. I'm going to spend a good bit of time talking about the Grunfeld, actually. So they went c4, which is my invitation to either going into... Uh, Grunfeld, or I could even go into more King's Indian lines. It, it's up to you, really. Um, then here, this is this is the Grunfeld. You strike in the middle. This is this is considered a hyper hyper modern opening for those who aren't aware of what that means. Um, that basically means like a lot of you know openings back in the day just op you know just take control of the center, do these sort of moves, and that's that's the best move. You know, control the center with your knights, and you can even fianchetto. Basically, just try and put your pawns in the... Oh, well, don't do that. Put your pawns into the center. That's how you control the game. Hypermodern openings are more like, look, you can have the complete center, giving them the complete center. I'm going to try and chip away at that center from a distance. That's the whole point of hypermodern openings. That's... that's You know, what's funny is I don't even play the Grunfeld well, but it's such a cool and interesting opening to me. There are so many variations. There are. It might be the most theory-dense opening in all of chess, to be honest with you. It's so theory-filled. That and the Rui Lopez are two of the most theory-filled openings I can think of, but some people might see that as a reason to not learn it because it gets really complex and it's a lot of memorization. I don't love that a lot of the game is a lot of chess is about memorizing things constantly, but because um, it makes people feel like they can just memorize things and then they'll get a good position, but it doesn't really, it's not really about being creative and that sort of thing. This is a lot of what like Bobby Fischer, for example, kind of believed, sort of. Um, but basically to go back to the Grunfeld, you're just basically saying here, you can take the whole center. I'm not going to push any of my pawns there. Just, I mean, I'm going to push this one in a second, but my opponent to their credit, they knew very mainline theory. I haven't seen knight here. Actually, usually I see something like this. I feel like, and then I do this and then I usually feel like I see knight c3 or sorry, knight e2, knight c3. Um, but they go in a different order, which is obviously perfectly fine. Um, takes, takes, and then here. Um, I could have also, I think, just done like, you know, probably here, here, here. Um, could they have taken, not really, this, there's different pawns that are typically hanging in the Grunfeld for both sides. Sometimes white has a pawn that's hanging, black has a pawn that's hanging. It's, it's not clear why you shouldn't, it's not, it's not, you shouldn't take pawns like that, just very willy-nilly in the Grunfeld because it gets so tactical and complex and the positional play that you're allowing your opponent from taking a free pawn is just, it's tremendous. So anyway, they play slightly differently, but I know a lot of these main lines here, here, here. Um, and now we're on move, like what? I don't even know what move we're on. We're on move uh, 13 and we see a unique move. This is what I mean, like the Grunfeld, you need to know some theory, but I find that to be fun. Um, takes, takes here. So it didn't like this, actually. It said black had a better move. Bishop takes immediately. Okay. And then here. And then e6. Like I said, once again, you're 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 opening yourself up. Oh, oh, so pretty kind of similar to what I was thinking, actually. It's a pretty similar line to what I ended up doing. Um, yeah, pretty similar line. And black is it's completely even, but you can see the edge. It's giving black just like a infinitesimally small, if that's a word, edge. And I'm glad I played the right move. It doesn't really care for you to defend this pawn. Um, yeah, and I'm winning here. I just have to find the right moves. What's the right move? Queen F1. Oh, that's a really hard move to see. But is it though? The rook can't come back and defend and the queen can't come back and defend. Wow. 
Their best move is f4. Wow, yeah. I might even consider g5 in this position. Is that a move? Okay, it's mate in 14, so you can't take the pawn. It says f. It tells you to do that. And if here, then it starts to get scary because now I'm starting to walk into mates. So you need to be careful. Well, sorry, no, that that not that mate, but walking into my own mate. You have to be careful of, you know, dragging your opponent's king into the middle of the board. You don't get mated on your own. Yeah, yeah, bishop, uh, sorry, queen here was not even on my radar at all. At all. Yeah, I spent one second on this. I should have, I should have, um, a lesson in, you know, you feel like you have a good plan, great, but just hold on and, because you, you see the board more clearly when the actual variations you calculated on your head are actually on the board. If I had sat here and thought, okay, what's another good move? I can't give a check. Ooh, but maybe something like this or maybe like this. Yeah, maybe that would have come to my mind, but now it's just completely even and white is actually doing better here. Yeah, it doesn't want this. Oh, wants this check, but then what if here? Oh, yeah. You're threatening this, you're threatening this. See what I mean? It's the, some of these end games that the Grunfeld produces are kind of scary. I mean, this is a typical end game you might see in any opening. It's not it's not specific to the Grunfeld. Yeah, but h5 is just a lunacy. This is this is bad. They play a very good move here. I give another check. If they take, yeah, they're getting mated. It's mate in three. It's mate in three. F4. Um, what? Like, probably this check is probably what I would do. And then here, here. Um, Oh, sorry, not that mate. Oh, pawn checkmate. No, it's not, just kidding. Oh, but what? What's the mate? Hurry up and find the mate for me. Okay, right there. <laughs> I couldn't find the mate, but then here they just come back. But then you could win a queen, but you'd rather have mate, right? Oop, not that. Okay, this has been a terrible exercise in me trying to find checkmates, Jesus Christ. Anyway, so yeah, g5 was a nice attempt, but they, they're they smarter than that. They played the best move. I came back because I was worried. What did it want? H7, I didn't think I could play. I was going to play H7, but I saw some kind of... I guess this doesn't come with any kind of check. And then F6. Oh, you just block... Yeah, you block the line of sight. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Oop, that's not where we want to go. So, but yeah. Then they just... Uh, yeah, just, just, yeah, they had to run away. They had to run away. But here it's just mate. Mate in 11 is the one it calculates. I thought this would have just been a quick mate. Here, 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 rook c1, here. This isn't as clear as it is, it seems. Okay, that's wild. I guess I just didn't calculate the correct lines, but it's still mating. Here, here, rook f4, here. Queen g3. Yeah, I maybe would have played that at some point, but this is this is kind of scary. No, wait, what do you do? You go here. Oh yeah, because the queen can't come here and they can't take this. Fair enough. So my opponent maybe resigned slightly prematurely. Maybe I would have struggled to find the actual mate. Especially with low time with like 29 seconds on the on the clock. Okay, the, the winning idea is here and they they, they can't do anything. You just come here and what? Queen d4 check, and then here and what? Rook there. It tells you to start sacking your pieces. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Well, really nice Grunfeld game. I didn't really do much of a crash course. There's tons of videos out there on the Grunfeld. Actually, not as many as you'd think. Um, but yeah, just nice hyper modern opening. You don't put any of your pawns in the center and you try and chip away at their. You know, this is a potential move, but it's super weakening because then you're. You're potentially allowing a knight to kind of maybe not jump in there because your pawn is here, but you're allowing a potential outpost on this square, for example, for the knight could you know, reroute this way. And so you don't you don't try and chip at it with your own pawns. You try and, you know, create different moves and you know, so the Grunfeld is a really fun opening. I highly recommend it to tons of people who play against D4 and maybe struggle or just want interesting and complex lines. Like as you can see, I didn't play it perfectly. I didn't really play it that well actually, but it allows for all sorts of different tactics. Okay, cool. Nice game. Nice win against a top-rated opponent. Is that the highest-rated opponent I've ever beaten? I want to quickly check. So it says the highest is this person, 2076, but 
I think that's not true anymore, right? Because I just beat this dude. I don't know. It doesn't matter. In any case, thank you so much for watching, everyone. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that game. It feels nice to not tilt and lose a bunch of more games. Like, we're up to 2019, which is nice. I was kind of worried we'd dip down into the 1900s. I really don't want that because I feel like if I'm there, I'm going to stay there for a while. Um, just because I'm, I'm kind of like a, I'm a bit of a confidence player, you know? If any of you watch sports, you know there's those players where it's like, okay, they play really well when they feel like they're in high spirits. They feel like they're being praised, all this stuff. Some players don't need that. They'll play well regardless. I'm the kind of person who knows, who needs to know other people think they're doing well, I guess. And if I constantly feel like I'm playing like crap, my viewers think, oh, wow, this dude's terrible. Then I feel like my confidence is low. So, yeah, luckily that is not what happened. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching, everyone. Nice win in the Grunfeld defense. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.